Okay. Um, well, the study that, uh, that you asked me about has to do with um, the impact of sexual assault on, on parenting, on sort of the postpartum experience, uh, experience for women. Uh, we actually, in our sample, we had 6,400 moms from 59 different countries. Uh, when we actually looked, of course, we looked at trauma data because you really have to when you're looking at sleep. Uh, and we asked a lot of questions about trauma, and we, dis we determined that we had almost 1,000 women in our sample uh, reported sexual assault. Okay, so this is not just childhood sexual abuse. This is actually the most serious type of child sexual abuse and also peer assault as well. Okay, so, you know, either uh, oral, anal, or vaginal penetration. I'm sorry to be explicit, but that's actually the research definition that we used. Okay, so very serious sexual assault. And one of the things that's been kind of interesting is, again, a lot of times when people talk about, you know, we can't, quote, force women to breastfeed, uh, the, the group they always trot out is, well, what about sexual abuse survivors? You can't force them. Well, obviously, we can't force anybody to breastfeed. It just would not be appropriate. Uh, and again, if a trauma survivor is telling you she can't, we have to, under, we have to, we have to respect that boundary. Okay, I think that that's really important. You know, if a mom really can't do it, we need to respect that and say, okay, you know, what can we help you with and how can we help make this better for you? And so again, you know, I kind of have a long sort of track record of, of working in this area because, you know, that's, that's the field I come from is family violence and child sexual abuse. Uh, so again, I have, you know, I've had a lot of, a lot of experience in this and I've talked to, you know, really hundreds of moms at this point about it because they find me online or I talk to them at conferences. Uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be sort of casual about the impact of this. You know, these, these types of events can have a fairly pervasive effect, you know, on women, in women's lives. Uh, I'm actually glad we're actually out talking about it. I'm really happy to see people talking about it as a risk factor for things like postpartum depression. Frankly, it's about time because for a long time we never mentioned it. Uh, and, you know, it's a big, it's a big factor. So we had a thousand women in our sample. And so we were able to actually look at some things that I don't think other studies have been able to do. Now, we found that the women with the sexual assault history were as likely, exactly as likely, to breastfeed. So again, it sort of throws away sort of one stereotype, that women with a sexual assault history won't want to breastfeed. Um, in fact, I don't think we should, we should try to you know, be patronizing to women at all. We need to find out what they want to do. But it was 78% for both groups. Okay, one was like 78.4% and the other was like 78.6%. I mean, it's just that they're, you know, for all intents and purposes, they were identical. Um, you know, we found, we had two previous studies that indicated we might find something like that, but they were both small samples. One showed a higher intention to breastfeed, the other showed a higher rate of breastfeeding initiation. Okay, but again, very small samples, you know, we have almost 1,000. We have 994. Uh, one of the things that we found, I think, that was really interesting, and I was surprised by this, was the impact of breastfeeding uh, for sexual assault survivors. Uh, we looked, you know, when we looked just kind of across the group, I mean, every variable we measured, the sexual assault survivors looked worse. Their sleep was worse, it took them more time to get to sleep, it took them, you know, they had fewer, time, few, fewer minutes that they actually slept, they were more tired, they felt their health had been impaired, I mean, it was just on and on, it was everything. And it, it was exactly what we would predict based on the literature. But the interesting thing was, when I looked at that by feeding method, a very different pattern showed up. And I, I'm gonna actually put my hands up here so you can actually see what I'm doing, okay? The breastfeeding moms looked like this, and the mixed and the formula feeding moms looked like this, okay? And so pretty much on every variable we looked at, that, you know, the women who had been sexually assaulted who were breastfeeding, uh, you know, they were still obviously affected, you know, because like, you know, like let's say, you know, it, a lower score was the one that was, you know, more negative. You know, there was still a little bit of a slant in that line. But their sisters in the mixed and formula feeding group who were sexually assaulted looked like they were clear down here. Okay, and so a lot of times the women who were sexually assaulted and breastfeeding looked better than the non-assaulted, you know, mixed and formula feeding women. You know, which was really, you know, I thought that was a very encouraging finding. And again, I said, I think a lot of it's physiological. You know, that breastfeeding actually was turning off that sort of chronic stress response and actually helping women kind of cope with new motherhood. I, I think what it shows is that, you know, nature knew we didn't live these sort of perfect lives, you know, that there was a built-in system to kind of handle trauma. Uh, and again, like I said, that breastfeeding did that so beautifully and just really helped kind of restore health to women. And again, like I said, I know it's not always easy. And in fact, some women really can't. I've talked to a number of them over the years. 
Uh, but I think we, we, the first is we shouldn't assume, and second, it's really, if a mom can do it, it's really quite worth it to her. Um, it will be, you know, it will help her. You know, and sometimes moms can do kind of a hybrid. You know, they sort of may pump, you know, and maybe use a bottle for certain feedings. I mean, the, you know, we, we need to work with them wherever they are. Um, but it is actually really kind of, I thought it was a very hopeful finding. Uh, that paper's actually just, just come out. It's actually in the, um, the journal Breastfeeding Medicine. So it is hot off the press. Uh, but I'm actually, I'm very excited about, uh, about what we found in that.